they say third time is a charm and I really hope that's true because it's the third time I'm recording this video today and it's past midnight so I really hope this works. Anyway, so the other day an email popped into my inbox from a friend that wanted to work with me basically for me to create courses for them to promote their platform. Now I'm not gonna say who it was, I don't want to jinx it, but I'll just say it's a brand that I've heard about quite a bit. But the question is why did they reach out to me? Well, it was actually because of my Skillshare classes. And side note, this is not sponsored by Skillshare. Honestly, I wish <laughs> they would far through with me. But yeah, it's not the first brand that has reached out to me because they saw that I had classes on Skillshare. So all this to say that you should definitely be putting yourself and your freelance business out there if you want to get inbound clients and not always have to reach out to clients yourself. With that being said, today I have eight things to share with you that will essentially help you get out there and show up in front of your clients so they can be the ones to reach out to you and not always the other way around because we're freelancers, we want to work, we don't want to be pitching all day, right? I'm going to stop recording because I'm afraid this will catch on fire or something, but yeah. I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing you wanna do in order to get yourself in front of clients, it's creating a profile on a freelancing platform like Upwork, like Fiverr, like Contra. I advise you to choose one that you like the most, build up a good profile there and stick to that until you get a grip on it. Because I know it can be tempting to create one in all of them and be everywhere at once, but trust me, that is hard work. Not that our freelancing platform is great to be on because you get to apply to jobs and get those warm leads, but you can also have clients reach out to you, which is what we're talking about today. This is especially relevant for things like the project catalog on Upwork or the consultations feature or things like the gigs on Fiverr or even just having a portfolio on Contra. These are all ways that clients can reach out to you. So my advice to you is if you haven't set up those gigs yet, if you haven't set up your project catalog or whatever it is, go ahead and do that even just today. Block one hour off your calendar. We all have one hour to spare. You'll thank me later, essentially. And also, obviously, the more work that you do on each of these platforms, the more you grow on them and the more you go on reviews on your reputation on a platform, you get badges and everything like that. And that way it will be easier for future clients that are, you know, just browsing through all the freelancers to trust you more because you have that social proof right there. Share your work on social media. Once again, you don't need to be everywhere at once. I highly advise you to not do that. That's the quickest best to burn out. There are so many platforms that, you know, it, it, it's not needed, okay? I advise you to choose one or two. Probably if I had to choose two, I would do one that you really like. So for me, that would be Instagram. And the second one is something that your ideal client uses on a daily basis. I guess for most of us, that would be LinkedIn, right? It's the most professional platform of them all. So yeah, choose one that you like, choose one that your ideal client likes. And with that being said, make sure that you secure your name on all of them. So you can have the same name across all of them. So it's easier for people to find you, even if you're not going to use them right away. You may want to use them later. So better safe than sorry. Trust me. And if you can, while you're at it, <laughs> secure the domain for that as well, because I couldn't get the domain I wanted. And later on, I couldn't get the YouTube username I wanted. So you didn't do it like me. Then it's time to post. And and you can make sure to share some case studies, some testimonials, portfolio items, you know, just things you've done. But also don't be afraid to show a little bit of personality and a little bit of the behind the scenes and finish work as long as you obviously have permission to do so. But this can kind of humanize your brand. We'll talk about personal rent later on, but that's really important because even if you're working with a bigger company, who's going to hire you will be a person, not a robot. So it's really important to connect with people directly because people connect with other people. Go figure. Network with people in your area or in your industry, ideally both. And for this, obviously, you can attend local events that are in your industry or your ideal client's industry, so you can meet people in that niche. But you should also make sure to be active online in, you know, relevant forums or Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, anything like that, you know, just making sure to participate in relevant discussions and showing your expertise because that will get you in front of more people and more people will lead to more clients. 
create a strong personal brand. I just hinted a little bit about this, but yes, even as a freelancer, you should have a personal brand and no, it doesn't need to have a fancy logo, fancy name, fancy colors that can come later, but it's really important that you clearly define what your brand values, what you stand for essentially. My three brand values, I literally have them plastered on my wall. Hold on. There they are. They are fun, quality, and creativity. And I try to infuse that in all my communication with my clients, all my marketing, but also in my work. You also want to have a clear idea of your ideal client, who they are, what they struggle with, everything like that. This can obviously change over time. It's totally fine. But you want to have, like I said, an idea to start with. So you know who you're talking to and you can tailor your services and your marketing to them. And last but not least, you want to know what your unique selling proposition is uh, or USB. Essentially, this is what makes you stand out from the competition. What can you do or what can you bring to the table that other photographers, social media managers, video editors, designers, what do you have that makes you special and why should they hire you and not freelancer next door? And once again, these things will be the base of everything you post, your pitches, and also the work that you do for your clients. Now, thing number five, I hope you're writing these down, is to optimize your online presence. You can have your social media profiles, you can have your website, Webport profile, whatever it is that you choose to have. But if they're not optimized, they won't be working hard for you. You'll be working hard for them, not the other way around. And you do want to work hard, you don't want to have to work hard all the time. Because if those profiles, if those accounts, if that website, if those are not optimized, no one will find you and therefore no one will reach out wanting to work with you because they don't know you exist. Now, I'm not an SEO expert by any means, but essentially it's just knowing the keywords that you want to target. So things that your ideal client is likely searching for. For example, some clients describe my role like social media manager. Others are more like social media marketing or social media VA. I've seen that also, but I personally don't like that term. But yeah, trying to figure out through market research and all that, you can look at, for example, jobs on Upwork and see what's the most common term that the type of client that you want is using in their job titles. Try to figure out those keywords and put them in strategic places. You don't want to stuff them everywhere, but things like your Instagram name section, for example, your bio on Instagram or other social media platforms, your tagline below your name on LinkedIn, your Upwork profile title, or your website homepage title as well. Just try to put that where it makes sense so clients can find you easier. That's the goal. Offer valuable content. It's not enough to have your social medias and to post your testimonials there, your work there, and call it a day. I see actually a lot of freelancers approaching social media as just a promotional thing where you can put all your work and clients will call your way. But like I said before, you want to do a little bit more than that. You want to show your personality, yes. But you also want to share your knowledge. I know some people are afraid of sharing their knowledge because they'll be afraid that the client won't want to hire them. So if in my case, once again, if I tell you how to post to Instagram, you won't need to hire me. So I will be, I shouldn't do that, right? Wrong. Because once again, and I feel like I say this in every single day, or I'll keep saying this because it's important. Clients are busy. They're busy running their business. They don't want to have to worry about learning a new skill and implementing that new skill. For example, on social media, they would have to learn the basics of marketing and social media. They would have to keep track of trends. They would have to create an art in themselves, post that content, and then engage with their audience. And likely some of these parts would be skipped and then it wouldn't work for them. So as you can see, social media managers and other types of freelancers are needed, even if you teach your clients how they can do it themselves. And why should you do that then? Basically, it just shows that you're an expert at what you do, that you know what you're talking about. And by them seeing you as an expert, they'll be more likely to want to reach out to you and eventually hire you. Offer free consultations or free audits to clients. Now, I know I say this all the time, do not do work for free and not accept free trial or free test or whatever, but that's what clients suggested. And this may seem counterproductive or it may seem like the client suggesting it or you suggesting it is the same thing. But let me explain to you the difference. If the client is the one suggesting it, they're kind of expecting it. And it's almost like they're demanding that or making that a requirement for you to be 
considered for the challenge. I find it a little bit icky and there can be scams related to that. So I don't like to dabble into that and I don't recommend you to do either. But if you're the one suggesting it to the client or offering it to the client, it's simply you're giving them a gift. They didn't ask for it, but you're giving that like out of the kindness of your own heart. It's kind of the same thing as sharing your tips on social. You show yourself as the expert and it's a good way to provide that free value before you go in and ask for what you want, which in this case would be like a, a contract. You know, they get a test drive. They get a taste of what it's like working with you. And hopefully that's a good one. They get a good first impression of you. Bonus tip, you want to offer great customer service and you don't need to respond like instantaneously, but respond quickly and do your best to help them because customer service definitely goes a long way. Utilize referrals. Referrals are probably my favorite. I know I'm a social media manager and I really like social media, so don't be hurt social media, but referrals just hit differently, you know? Think about it like this. If a friend of yours says, you need to hire this logo designer, they did my logo, they're great to work with and the outcome is great, you should do it. It's a different thing than if you find a logo designer on say Instagram and they're like, you should definitely want to work with me. I'm great and whatever. That kind of feels differently. And doesn't mean that they're all lying about it, but you're more likely to trust your friend than a random stranger talking about themselves, right? This can go hand in hand with asking clients for testimonials. So you can ask them for a testimonial if you can include their work in your portfolio, but also mention, hey, if you have anyone in your network that might be interested in X service, feel free to lead them my way. I'm really in luck today. My camera just overheated. So sorry if the framing is a little bit different. I don't even know where I was. Oh yeah. And one thing you can try to do if you're finding it hard to get referrals is to offer a little incentive, a little nudge to your clients so they can be more likely to refer to other people. This can be uh, a discount on their next booking with you or their next package. You can offer them once again, a free consultation, a free audit or something like that or even, you know, just ask back. But that can be that little push that they need to refer you to others. Now, the question is, are you ready to start getting emails in your inbox overnight? So you can wake up to an inbox full of leads. And I mean, sure, this is something that's likely not going to happen between today and tomorrow, even if you implement all eight things that we talked about. Also, please don't try to do them all today. You know, take your time, do one a week or one a month. But trust me when I say that the time you spend on this will be well worth it. And it's one of those things that you plant to seed now. And if you keep on watering it, eventually it will grow. And I mean, why not start today? Like if you have an hour to spare, just pick one from the list. I'll have the list down below as well so you can check it out. Just pick one and start today because if you keep putting it off, Trust me, it will take even longer. But in the meantime, while you procrastinate just a little bit more, because I know YouTube binges are real, why not be productive in that procrastination and learn the three things that you must have on your upper profile? I'll have the video right here where you can learn that. So go check it out and I'll see you there.